and the just for their true faith and for their profession of that faith. You who clothe their bodies with glory and their souls with light, make us worthy of your abundant mercy and grace so that we may find you as they found you and enter with them into the dwellings of light where we will raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Son and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father who chose the righteous and the just to preach of his righteousness and justice. And to the Son, to whom the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors bore witness. And to the Holy Spirit, who took care of them and sanctified them with the life of asceticism, fasting, prayer, and good works. To the good one be glory and honor on this day of their blessed commemoration and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory and praise to you, O Christ, the eternal light, for you give light to the entire world, revealing all truth. You have given to your holy church the righteous and the just, who preach salvation to all peoples and all nations. They were like lamps of knowledge and of holiness, giving light to those who walk the path of life. The martyrs gave their lives for the truth of your gospel. The teachers dedicated their lives to the study, to study your word and to pass it on faithfully. The numb nuns, monks, and hermits left everything and followed you. They carried your cross, kept your commandments, and practiced asceticism, fasting, worship, and prayer. They consecrated themselves to a life of service as angels of purity and mercy, and as, as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, that we may keep their faith and walk in their hope. May we be worthy to share in their happiness and enjoy the vision of your noble face. With them we praise and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Thank you. 
Jesus, precious in your eyes is the death of your righteous ones. Blessed are they and all your saints, who since their childhood have kept their bodies and their souls pure. They are like fragrant incense in your presence. May the pleasant memory of their lives spread in your holy church as living examples to all the faithful. With them may we share in the reward of your kingdom and glorify and thank you forever. Amen. <laughs> as the church does when she honors all the saints. To the Hebrews. Baruch Mo, Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and a gloomy darkness and storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words, such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them, for they could not bear to hear the command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, 
So fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God and heaven, the heavenly Jerusalem and countless angels in festal gathering and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven and God, the judge of all, and the spirit of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Righteous will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Sinful hands. This is Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, proclaim life unto the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, And when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he shall sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He shall place the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did, you, when did we see you as a stranger and welcome you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill, or in prison, and visit you? And the king shall say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least of my brethren, you did for me. And then he shall say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fires, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. And then they shall answer and say, 
Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? And he will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. And these shall go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. This is the truth, peace be with you. You have not approached that which could be touched in the blazing fire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, in the Commedia of Dante, which you should all read before you die, sooner rather than later, it's one of those glass classic books you should be familiar with as a Catholic. Dante is the great bard of Thomas Aquinas. And so he's writing in a couple generations after Thomas Aquinas' his teachings. And so this vision of 15,000 lines through three different large poems forming the large Commedia is really laying out a Catholic vision of creation. But it is also about the story of a pilgrim soul. Dante is the pilgrim. Dante is led by reason for a ways, and then, of course, faith has to always be in place. But Dante begins this whole place, he says, in the middle of the years, middle of his years, so age 35, because he's taking that from the Psalms. And when you read the poem, you have to read it slowly, because it's filled with details like that. He's telling you what day of the week it is and what year it is by telling you what planet it is and what constellation. And so you have to know that he's showing you how much he knows astronomy. And then the whole thing for 15,000 lines is a poem that rhymes in tercets. First line rhymes with the third, and then the second line of those three rhymes with the first line of the next three. And he does this again and again, and it's quite beautiful and quite stunning an accomplishment. But the story of the pilgrim aspect of Dante is that Dante is a soul who is lost and wandering in the wilderness. That's how it begins. And so he's trying to find, clearly he's Christian, but he is trying to find out what he needs to do because he's not really living. He's not sinning against the faith, but the faith is not alive. St. Paul says with the line that I gave you, you didn't come. He's telling the Hebrews to remain faithful to remain attached to their religion. They're upset because they've lost the beautiful music in the temple. They've lost the processions. They've lost the sacrifices. They've lost the ceremonies of Jerusalem because they've converted. And those sacrifices, in any case, have been fulfilled in the Messiah. But they hanker after, of course, the pretty incense and the processions and the singing of the Psalms. Of course, it's very human. It's very normal, and there's nothing in it that's sinful. But that normalcy can bring you to losing the faith. And so he says, you haven't been called to something that is tangible, something that you can touch, or even to a burning fire on the mountain. And there he starts talking about Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai and the crashing thunder and the lightning and all of this, and Moses bringing down and giving the covenant that forms the people of Israel. And he says, but you have any, it's not even that, a tangible mountain, which yes, was awe-inspiring and terrifying, that even an animal that approached the mountain had to be stoned to death. Yes, but it's not even that that you've been called to. And so he says, you've been called to hire. You have been called to the true fire. The end of this chapter will say, our God is a consuming fire. 
And you know among our Syriac fathers, fire is always an image that comes up. That there is fire in the Jordan when our Lord is baptism, baptized. That there is fire in the chalice. It is the divine spirit. This, this image, the priest kneeling down at the epiclesis, Anin Morio, hear us, O Lord. And you would all be face to the ground, bums in the air if you didn't have pews. Because that's the epiclesis. And we ask for the fire to come down, transform this bread and wine, and transform us as you once transformed the womb of Mary. Fire is always this imagery in the Syriac theology of the mysteries. But St. Paul is saying, it's right out of St. Paul. St. Paul is saying, those things that you have been called to, that you are hankering after, you've been called to greater, to the God who is to true fire, of his very nature of luminosity and of burning and his demands, that it requires a lot. This is true. And God will use us where we are at in our weaknesses in order to teach us. And so Dante when he writes of this poem, he is the pilgrim soul. He has to go all the way through hell. He goes through purgatory. And then the third large poem, the third canto, is on the paradise, which is the most difficult one to read. Now, anyone of a certain age, you probably read pieces of it in high school, but only of the Inferno. It's like a freak show. And that's the way it's read. You just pull out things and what goes on, that's it, and then you're done. And it's like, well, that's not the Divine Comedy. You know it exists, but the Divine Comedy is actually finishing with the Paradiso and meeting of Beatrice. Beatrice, the name itself means the one who makes beatific, who makes happy, who brings the pleasant. And Beatrice was a woman, Beatrice. Beatrice was a woman that Dante had known. She had died 10 years before he places the poem. And he goes on and on about how much he loved Beatrice. She was wonderful. She was beautiful. He didn't have a relationship with her directly. They had been, as younger people, they had been friends. But from always from a distance, he always loved Beatrice. She went on, she married, and she died young. So now he's 35, so she probably died at about the age of 26 or so. We don't know exactly. But his whole talking is about how much he loved Beatrice and how devoted he was to her. She was beautiful, she was faithful, she was holy. She was all these things. Everything that we do in our, on earth, we say all these nice things. But the question is, is, do we actually act on those nice things? We can talk easily. You know, this week when we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, this whole week dedicated to the saints and to the just and to the righteous, is we render gratitude and honor to them because they've made it. But that's not the whole story. The story is, is we want to imitate them. It's not just about what they did. It's about what we're supposed to be doing. And so when Dante goes through hell, he has to learn a lot in wisdom, in his confrontation, in his meeting of the damned which hell is just simply spoken of as being the place of those who have refused their reason. In other words, everyone in hell is insane. And because they were insane on earth, they are in hell. They made wrong choices, they made the wrong decisions, and for that reason, the effects of their choices is damnation. But Dante, of course, in the run of the very first thing that takes place is he meets this woman Francesca de Rimini. And she's well known and she becomes famous. She's the, she has the longest lines in hell. And she talks about how isn't this sad. She's in, the, she's in the highest place of hell and they're being slammed around the cavern. And behind her is this man, Paolo. And the two of them slam around in this hurricane wind, throwing them around, because on earth they live by their passions. They are there for the sins of impurity and their adultery. And so they are their punishment of living by their passions and being churned around by pure sensual desires. That is their choice. And therefore, in Dante's writing of the Contrapasso, they suffer to be buffeted around by their passions. That emotion to be slammed around in this cavern, bashing off the walls for all eternity. 
But Francesca is ordered to stop at this moment and she comes above this cavern and to speak to Dante. And she starts telling all of this story about why what I did really wasn't bad. Look at Paolo, he's wonderful. And my husband, he's horrible, he's terrible, he was cruel and he was mean. And we started reading books together. And he starts going through this whole thing and at the end of it, Dante, Dante passes out. He's so overwhelmed, he's in tears by this story of how sad this is. She's in hell and all she wanted was love. This is terrible. And so he starts getting tears in his eyes and he gets all weepy. And then he just passes out because he's so overwhelmed by emotion. And Virgil, the great Roman poet, is leading him. Virgil indicates human wisdom. And Virgil looks down at Dante and basically tells him, get up and grow up and don't be stupid. You're being seduced by someone who is damned. Now how unintelligent is that? That's the beginning of the inferno. And from there he goes deeper and deeper and deeper into human perversion and betrayal. And he learns, by the end, he now learns something of wisdom by the time he makes it to the very bowels and the pits of hell with Satan himself. And I give you that story because in purgatory, it's a mountain. He's climbing the seven-tiered mountain. They climb this mountain. And when they come to that top of that mountain, is also the unchaste who are there <clears throat> for sins that were not as depraved as Francesca's. And by the way, you do meet Francesca's husband farther down among the wrathful and the anger, the people who have no control over their anger, and down amongst the murderers. So when he arrives at the top of purgatory, you arrive again at the unchaste. So you'll notice that what Dante does is, yes, there are people who go to hell because of their impurities. And there are also people who are being purged who are, have also been impure, not to the same degradation as Francesca, but also you have to purify through all of these in purgatory. But when he comes to the top of purgatory, it is a wall of fire. So hopefully you see why I'm bringing this up today. He is brought to this wall of fire, and in the fire he sees faces that appear and then disappear into the fire. Now, of course, he's gone on for thousands of lines on this, and you're coming towards the end of the Purgatorio. And the whole time Virgil has been with him, all through hell, climbing out through the other side, and then beginning to climb Mount Purgatory with Virgil. And each time he comes, each of the seven tiers are paralleled with the seven capital sins. And lust or impurity being the last of them coming at the top. And Dante does that because he realizes, yes, you can go to hell for impurity. You can also have to go through severe purifications, even in the state of grace and purgatory for impurity. So either way, yes. But he also puts one at the top and they're both at the top. In other words, he understands the frailty of human nature. All right? We make dumb choices. Our Lady of Fatima says, most people go to hell because of sins of impurity. Did she not? We know that famous quotation. But Dante is also writing about human beings and he knows the weakness of the flesh. But remember, the whole time you've gone on at this point for about maybe 9,000 lines, D Virgil's always, D Dante is always talking about Beatrice, this woman that I loved and she was wonderful and I did all, this, I did all these things. <clears throat> but what you begin to realize is this is purely naturalistic. And you're going to learn it later on when he meets Beatrice because she's going to slap him around. Even though she is a blessed soul, when she meets him, she's going to humiliate him, she's going to slash her with his tongue, and he's going to cry and whimper and have a quivering lip and also pass out again in front of another woman, but Beatrice. Then we'll come back to that in a moment. But as he's watching these faces come into the fire and then disappear, Virgil stands behind him and he says, you have to walk into that. And so he's standing in front of the fire and he's paralyzed, he says. There's no way he can move. 
Because he sees these figures, these people that are in the fire. And you have to walk through the wall of fire, Virgil tells him. No, I can't. You must. There's no way. And Virgil says, if you do not step into the fire, you won't see Beatrice. And so Dante is by that verbal prompting pushed into the fire. And he says he would rather have been plunged into molten glass than to have to go through what he endured in the last of the purgations of purgatorial. And as he went through, you can't see anything because he's in the midst of fire. You don't know what direction, what's up, what's down. He can't say, but he's been told before going in, you listen to the voice of the angel and you follow the voice of the angel and you blind yourself by the light that goes of this fire and you cannot see, you know not know your direction, you follow the voice of the angel and you will come out the other side, which he does. And when he enters through the fire, it's paradise. It is ancient Eden. And that has a whole place of it. And it's here where he's going to meet Beatrice. But as it says, when Beatrice appears, it's a theophany. It is this manifestation of God. And it's her eyes that he calls the emeralds, her green eyes that she has, that become the entrance by which he goes ultimately into the Paradiso, into heaven. But before that, when she meets him, she tears him apart because she loves him. Because she says to him when they come out, now there's been angels over throwing flowers all over the place. There's the cardinal virtues. There's the theological virtues. These women dancing all over the place. It's, it's quite a scene done poetically. But it's the virtues revealing themselves, faith, hope, and charity, justice, temperance, fortitude, these things that are appearing. And in the chariot that's being surrounded by it is Beatrice. And Beatrice is, is contemplating the animal that is pulling the chariot, which is the griffin. It's half lion, it's half eagle. Because it is the Christ, the divine, the eagle, and the lion, the human nature. She's not looking at Dante. He's all expectation. Because this is the way we live our human lives. It's all about me, and it's the things that I want, and the things that I need, and all the excuses I give in my life to do things that are perfectly mundane. And then I tack a rosary onto it and say, am I not a good Catholic? This is what Virgil, Dan, excuse me, that Dante is learning. Because once he gets to the fire, this is it. This is paradise. And what does he do? He says, well, the air. Why is the air? The wind goes in circles. Why is it in circles? He's so purely naturalistic. He's not considering the creation and the state of grace of human beings that had been in this place. He's interested in the astronomical aspects and the meteorological aspects of why the wind is blowing in a circle. And Beatrice, oh, she was so gorgeous. You've got to really pay attention. And so when this whole thing comes in, this whole cortege of walking candlesticks and elders, and then the griffin pulling this chariot, and this woman under, in the chariot was Beatrice, and the angels all above throwing rose petals everywhere, and the three women of faith, hope, and charity, and the cardinal virtues dancing on each side of this chariot, he's all in expectation because now this is Beatrice. This is a man who sees heaven as being nothing other than his own pleasures just lasting forever. Is this not common? So Dante is saying, you understand nothing of what the beatific vision is. And so Dante becomes the character to show us this lesson. And so he's all expecting to see Beatrice in the midst of this. And when he turns, because I don't understand what's going on here, all he sees is Virgil standing there with his mouth open because Virgil doesn't have the faith. Virgil is the Roman poet. Virgil is a pagan. He is reasonable. He is a poet. He is a classical man. But he doesn't know what this is either. And it's the first time Virgil has nothing to say. But Dante is still the sensual man trying to see Beatrice. And then he realizes she's veiled. 
and she's not looking at him. Oh, she's not as excited to see me as I am to see her. That's sad. Again, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And then what he also realizes, but it doesn't dawn on him, is she's not looking at him because she's ignoring him. She's looking at the Christ, the griffin. She's contemplating the incarnation. And so when the whole thing stops, this whole cortege stops, and Dante is standing now in front of this river, she does turn to him. And when she removes the veil, and he's so expected and so excited to see how beautiful she is, because she's a wonderful woman. She pulls up her veil, she looks at him, and she points her finger, and she begins to lash him verbally. You have come here for all the wrong reasons. You say that you loved me, and you say that I inspired you in goodness. But for 10 years, what did you do? And the angels are around, and the women that are around, they're like, oh, good lady, please don't. That's kind of harsh. That's, that's. And he says, you don't know what you are asking. He says that he loved me and says that I was virtuous, says that I inspired him, inspired this whole poem. But what did he do for 10 years? Did he actually increase in holiness? Did he increase in virtue? No, it's all words. He just talked and talked and talked and went after the other things of the world. And Dante speaks of himself as staring at Beatrice like shocked, speechless, and lip quivering, and she just goes into him, and tears start rolling down his eyes. And then she says to him, lift up your beard. It's a wonderful line. You are a man. Learn how to live this, which is the gospel of Christ. You are sensual, you are selfish, you are egotistical, and you talk a good talk, but that is not holiness and he collapses on the other side. This is how grace confronts the human being. It burns. This is why St. Paul says, you've not been called to some mountain, to something tangible, even a blazing fire. It's our God who is a consuming fire. And Beatrice knows that Dante cannot see God unless he has been purged inside and out by fire. Now you begin to see a bit why our Syriac fathers insisted so much on this imagery. Again, I highly encourage you to read the Divine Comedy slowly, prayerfully, thoughtfully. And I just wanted to give you that image this morning because as Catholics in the modern world, we have no idea what holiness truly means. We like reading lives of the saints. It's really cool when they levitate or shine light or heal or bilocate, but that's not holiness. St. John of the Cross even says those things, actually those things, forget about them. They're just showing you they're not there yet. You're still imperfect. You levitate, mm, the real saints don't levitate. You levitate because your nature is still reacting badly against the hand of God. And so you float, you radiate light, you do those types of things. St. John of the Cross says, so when this happens in your life, ignore it. Be suspicious, it might be from the devil, and go on in your continual faith, hope, and charity, and love of God, and enter more deeply into the fire. That's St. John of the Cross. It's a whole other sermon for another time. But we have an entire week this week. And what I ask, encourage you to do this week is we honor the saints. But our prayer should be we desire to step into that intangible fire. Purify me inside. Purify me outside. Purify my ego. Transform my intentions. Transform my desires. The things that I choose in life and make me holy. Let the confrontation with the one who makes beatific, with Beatrice, let that happen today. Begin that aspect of making me truly think what I should in a proper way, so that it's not the moment of judgment, not the moment of confrontation at death, 
but that I want to step into this fire now, today. That is holiness. That's how we imitate them. And how will that happen in each of our individual lives? No idea. All we know is that for most of the poem, as beautiful as it is, Dante is telling you now at this point, it's been blah, blah, blah. Because Beatrice is the truth teller. Beatitude burns. Grace lashes. Because it's necessary, because up until this time, Dante stepped into the fire at purgatory for a purely naturalistic reason. Now God used that. And Dante walked through the fire hearing the voice of the angel. But it was not good enough because it really wasn't a supernatural intention at all. It was to see the beautiful woman that he lost 10 years before. God will use our naturalistic and even our selfish motives, like he did with St. Paul outside of Damascus. St. Paul didn't go to Damascus with any good intentions. God allowed him to do that and then flipped him on his head, blinding him. We want God to take our naturalistic motives that we are filled with, that I am filled with, that you are filled with, that we are filled with, and we want them dumped on their heads now, today, while it is still meritorious for them to be changed and not wait for the moment of death where it's going to come to us anyway. It's the gospel today, right? The blessed and, and the damned both say the same thing. We didn't know what was going on. What do you mean we didn't do these things for you? Or we did these things for you? Because they're showing you what their motive was and the foundation of the choices in their lives. This is the fire that burns. This is the transformation of, from our purely naturalistic motivations to those that are truly of God. And so when the angels are reduced to silence around Beatrice, she gives them a lesson of what grace truly is which is transfiguration. So read this chapter. They'll read the whole chapter of St. Paul in the letter to the Hebrews today and see where it comes to the end of this chapter and it says that our God is a consuming fire. That's not a threat. It's beauty because it's purification. Beatrice, after you know the whole story, Beatrice is the one who set Dante on this pathway when he was lost at the age of 35 in the midst of the wood, dark woods, Beatrice is the one who initiated the entire process. And while he went all through hell and all through purgatory, she waited for him. And when he arrived, she ripped him apart. All of it because she loved him. She initiated the process of sending him through hell because she truly loved him. She had him raised up through purgatory and walking through fire quite literally because she loved him. And she ripped him apart at the river in paradise because she loved him. This is the lesson of the saints. And so may they intercede for us and obtain for us great desires, supernatural desires, purification of our intentions and our motives, place us firmly on the path of holiness and that it begin today. And may their prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not the end, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, it came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and it became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Episodic Church. We confess one baptism. Gives us of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Tell what Madame Hedal Loho, and what I know for the Hadei Tanyun, Twain, and Sugo Taibo Talk, Eul and by Tough West Good at Hayek Low, or Go the Show. your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Agatha. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
Alleluia. St. James, the brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation, purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. <coughs> peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God of peace be with us. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high, and you look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. You do not, do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, relying upon your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this holy mystery, instituted for our salvation, not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, and adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, the angels Angels, archangels, and the heavenly host all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. Holy, 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 holy,
righteous and give us his holy assurance to the world of righteous and strong and holiness of life and spirit who delves into all things even into the depths of God you are holy and the almighty and the creator of the good one you formed us from the dust of the earth and you gave us the joys of paradise when we had transgressed when we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the holy and ever virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kurie eleison, wabiyao mochao doktam chasho dilei ma bedchaye, and sabe lachma medao kori shoto uparechu kodesh, wakso ya ben talmidao koro maram, sabe chula mehne kulchun, hono denita. Fahro deal, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlo Sagi, Beta Paseo, Mate Heb, Husoyan, Haume, Wahoye, Dan Alam Alamin. Hokano Alcos, and Dumsik woman, Hamro, Min Mahayo. Barehu Kodesh, we are being taught in Karamara. Sabishtawa Mehne Kulchun, Hono Denita. Demahu Dila Diyati Ki Khadato, Dachlo Faikun Wachlav Sagiyem. Metei sheru metei heb Husoyon Chaume wa chaume Dan qaylam alamin Amin Do this in memory of me For whenever you eat this bread And drink this cup you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. Remember your death, your resurrection, your ascension into heaven. You're sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you as we ask you, and spoke to the nation of the soul of God, descended from the God of the Lord, how uh, awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Nitin Bor Rojo Chayo Kodisho, Unachen Alaydu Al Kurbano. Descent 
sense he may make this bread a life-giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and for eternal life for those who receive it. Make the mixture in this chalice, the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded upon the rock of faith, so that the gates of shale shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world, and for the holy places that you glorify by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially of our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the orders of the Church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, our civil leaders, and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, St. James the Brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Agatha, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Mindful, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, of the faithful departed who have died in the true faith, grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed. Us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
and the gifts presented to you and you have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure, but when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo elekurchunna. Wa amur ho'ilo. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and of his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, one, one holy Son, one, one holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness with the saints. May we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and of all the saints, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters. Oh, I forgot. So this coming Thursday is the Feast of St. Marin. So it's a holy day of obligation for the founder and the father of our church. So there will be, as usual with the holy days of obligation, there will be Ram show at 5.30 on Wednesday evening and followed by the Vigil Mass. And then on Thursday, there will be the Mass at 10 a.m. Feast of St. Mary. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.